Once our model is done training, we can export it into a specific optimized framework, depending on the hardware that we want to deploy our model on. In this video here, we're going to deploy a YOLO 11 model on a Jetson Nano. So I'm going to show you after a model, after a training model, you can use a pre-trained model or one directly out of the box. Then we can export it into an engine file. We're going to use TensorRT because and Jetson Nano is act like an NVIDIA device. So depending on the hardware and so on that you run it on, Intel hardware, NVIDIA hardware, Apple hardware, and so on, we can optimize for a specific framework. TensorRT is when we want to run it as fast as possible on a GPU. So we're going to see how we can generate an engine file, what an engine file is, what are different arguments and so on, and then how we can run inference on a Jetson Nano. And then also a cool thing, we will see how fast the model is with TensorRT. By just doing this optimization step here, we can get a significant boost in our frames per seconds. So now we're going to jump straight into the Ultra Linux documentation. If we go inside our guides tab, we can scroll a bit further down and see we have this NVIDIA Jetson. We also have a video covering the YOLO V8 model. Right now we're going to run it on the YOLO 11 model. We're going to see the setup, how we can set it up with Docker as well. If you want to just like run it directly um, with all the setup and so on, you can also go in and check this video here. You can just swap the model out and it's the exact same. But when we're using Docker, it's basically just run a Docker container and we can run inference. You don't have to set up any installation steps or anything that will be taken care of. So just need to run a single command and then do inference and we're pretty much good to go when we want to run TensorRT on a Jetson Nano. So we can use all the different Jetson boards and so on. You can read through it here check out all the different differences, how to set it up depending on the Jetpack version. If you have a newer one, it's probably just Jetpack 6.1 or like the newest one. So just go with that. Here we can see the different series comparisons depending on if you have an AGS RN, AGX RN, RX NX, RN Nano Super, the new one here, or any of the Savior boards up here at the bottom or to the right. We can see the AI performance and so on as well. If we scroll a bit further down, we can read about what it is. We covered that in the other video, but it's basically just an optimization framework. We want to get our Ultralytx models to run as fast as possible on NVIDIA hardware. Here we can see the Jetpack supported based on a Jetson device. I have a Jetson RNNX, and we're going to run it on Jetpack 6. Here's the quick start with Dogger, but we're going to jump into the Jetson Nano in just a second and basically just set it up, run inference and see how it performs. So we're basically just opening it up here on our Jetson. I'm just doing this recording here on Jetson. We just need to go in. First of all, you can also follow the install steps if you don't want to run Docker. All of the details is inside the documentation. We just need to, need to do the pip install, pip install also Linux package. If you run into any problems, it might be because of your NumPy version. So definitely make sure to check that out. Once you want to convert our model here to TensorRT and run inference, first of all, we just specify the format, which is the engine. That is pretty much the only parameter or argument that we need to specify. We can also specify half precision if we want to use floating point 16 bit instead of floating point 32, which is the default value. You can even run int 8 calibration so we can get all the way down from floating point 32 to integer 8. That's basically a reduction of 3x in our model size so we can run significantly faster. It might drop slightly in accuracy when we do all the way down to int 8, but if you just go half precision to 16 bit floating point value, then we don't really lose much accuracy or if any, and we also get way faster inference speed. So if you both do quantization, that's called quantization. If you both do that and also run TensorRT, we can actually get a significant speed up as we can see inside the documentation too. So if you just go down to the bottom and just take a look at these comparisons, we can see if you just run the PyTorch model, it's around for the nano version, it's around a bit over 20 milliseconds inference time per image. If we do our floating point 16 bit, I usually do that. We can also do int 8, but you might lose some accuracy and it's still very fast with just FP size 16. And it's still very fast with FP 16. So you can probably see we can get around like five milliseconds processing speed. So that's almost like four or five times increase in our inference speed or number of frames per second. So here it acts like means we want to have as less as possible because this is milliseconds per image. If you have 10 milliseconds per image, that is basically the same as 100 frames per seconds. So we can see on this new 
RN Nano Super Development Kit. It is very good. And if we go all the way down to floating point 16 bit, we can run like 200 frames per second in frames with the YOLO 11 Nano model. You can also bump up the model size here and still with the medium model run around 100 frames per second on this very tiny board. But here we actually like need to go in and do the optimizations and we can see how big of a difference it is. So we can create an engine file. This is just the first command that we need to run. It's going to do it automatically. Might take 10, 15 minutes, depending on what board that you're using, but it's going to export it into ONNX format. And then from the ONNX format, it's gonna generate the engine file. So it's just going to do a bunch of optimizations for specifically for NVIDIA hardware. So this is only going to work on NVIDIA hardware. And some of the boards, some of the JSON boards that even have this NVIDIA Deep Learning Accelerator. So we can also export it into that. So instead of specifying our device to CUDA, we can actually like specify DLA and then what core that we want to use. And this is also like pretty fast, comparable with the GPU on some of the boards. Depends on the model size, how much memory and all that, because sometimes if some layers are not supported, it's gonna fall back to the GPU, both use the GPU and DLA, so it might decrease the performance by that. So the fastest is probably just go with the GPU, but could be that you already have a lot going on on your GPU. Could be that you have two models that you want to run at the same time. Then it's gonna take up a lot of processing power if you just run all of it on the GPU. Then you can take the DLA, hand some of the resources over there so you can get even faster inference speed. So this is also a very good option to know about. And we just need to set this flag. It's gonna generate the engine file. We can just run inference and it's automatically going to detect what device that we have converted our model into and then run that on the specific hardware. So right now I'm just going to open up a terminal. Then we can just go inside our Docker. First of all, we set this variable here to our Docker image that we want to pull and then create our Docker container. Right now I'm also going to go into Claude here because when we run inside a Docker container, it doesn't have access to your file memory and so on. So we can still run the inference inside the Docker container. You can also just pull the image and then create your own custom image or whatever, create your own custom Docker container where you can set up your whole application and so on, but that's more complicated. Here, we're basically just going to connect our computer to it so we can have a webcam that we can do inference and act like get that out from our Docker container running. Cause it's basically just a separate system. Once we run to one, our separate Docker container, it's just a separate system. It doesn't have connection to your computer. It's just running on your hardware as a separate system. So then we need to connect those two together. I just asked Claude here for a few commands. So first of all here, we just need to run this X11 socket. And then we just have a server that we can connect to it and then send the data back and forth there. So the only thing that we have to do, all these commands will be down in the description as well. So you can just directly copy paste it. If you don't do it, you can only, you'll just see the inference results and so on in the terminal, but you don't want, but you can't see anything visually because when it's just running in that container, it can't do our M show that we're doing with OpenCV. So I'm basically just setting up all these details here. It's just a few commands that you need to throw into it and so on. If you have your JSON out of the box, you can also just run the export command. If you have PyTorch with GPU support, you have TensorRT, all of that set up on your Jetson board. It is already set up directly out of the box with that. When you install your Jetpack version, then you can just run the export and the inference and so on as well. But we already have the video with YOLV8 covering that. So here we're running Docker to see how that works. So this is also a really cool use case because most often when we build computer vision systems and so on, we have all the dark containers with our backend system, front end system, AI components that we just connect all of them. And then I just wanted to show you how we can connect the webcam through to that. So here I'm just running the different commands inside the terminal. We set our variable, we run our Docker command with our Docker image with all these different specifications. So on device zero, we're going to have our webcam attached to our computer with a USB, and then it's just going to connect to that automatically. This is a Jetson board, so it uses Ubuntu and Linux. Once that is done, we can just create our engine file. We'll take 10, 15 minutes. After, after that is done, we can just run our inference and specify our source equal to zero. Now we can set the show equal to true. Once we do that, it's going to show our image frame as well. If we don't do this step here where we connect our camera into the dark container, it's basically not going to be able to access our camera. So now let's run the command here where we run our inference 
we have exported it correctly into an engine. It's going to open it up. Now we can see that it has opened up the webcam. I'm just going to pick it up, move it around. So this is with floating point 32. We can get it to run significantly faster. If we do floating point 16, we just need to set half equal true when we export our engine file. We can also do in eight calibration specifically for our hardware, but here we can see our detections. When we move around with detected bottle, cup, laptop, TV, and so on, it is very fast. In the background here, I can see we're getting around like 15 milliseconds inference time and so on. So that will probably be like, sometimes we get 20, sometimes we get around 10. So we're probably around average of 15, 20 will be 50 frames per second, 10 will be 100 frames per second. So we get 75 frames per second running this YOLO Nano model with floating point 32. So this is how we can use a Jetson Nano. You can use any of them out there. We just export it run the inference as we're doing on any other hardware we just need to specify engine instead of dot pt that's it you get a significantly speed up so if you're using nvidia hardware definitely go in and use that and you can use it in the exact same way as any other application you can use all different autolytics models in the exact same way so hope you learned on definitely going to check this out here it is really important to know because you just get a free two three four x in inference speed you can save hardware cost but you can also run the models significantly faster process more videos and run in real time hope you learned a ton hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy learning